Good morning. Today, we're going to introduce four new products. We're going to show you some of the neatest apps that have ever been created for any desktop platform. We're going to show you the best color that's ever been. And we're going to talk about what we think is going to be the most important new application area of the 1990s called interpersonal computing. People told us they loved Next Step and that it was three, four, five years ahead of anything else they'd ever seen in the industry. And they loved the fact that we built it on top of Unix because together this gave them the multitasking that they really wanted. It gave them the transparent networking that they needed. It gave them the object-oriented development environment so that they could build applications in a third of the time. It gave them PostScript everywhere, not just on the printer, but throughout the system. It gave them multimedia, and they told us they loved how they could take computer illiterates and they could be using the system within a very short amount of time. So this is what people told us they loved. We heard this over and over and over again, and it all came down to next step. All four of these new products use the Motorola 68040. Every single one of them, running at 25 megahertz, and they turned out very fast. How fast? Let's take a look at a real world example. I got out Mathematica, and I used Mathematica to calculate and plot this chart. And all the next 040 machines came in at 26 seconds. That's 10 times faster than the Macintosh CI. So we're really pleased at this performance. <laughs> now let me take an opportunity to tell you a few other things that we uh, were able to build into all of these products. Every single new product has a 2.88 megabyte floppy disk built in. That's twice at the capacity of the current IBM PC world, although they're moving to this next year, we hear. And it's totally backward compatible with DOS. You stick in DOS floppies, they immediately show up in the next workspace manager. You can read and write them all day long. The second thing we built into all four of our new products is to continue to increase our connectivity and networking capabilities. These are the first computers in the world with built-in twisted pair Ethernet right alongside the BNC for the thin Ethernet. All four new products. <laughs> and this is it. It's in a slab, sits right underneath the monitor. You'll be able to get your hands on one in a few hours. This is what it looks like. It's called Next Station. It's a slab, the monitor, the keyboard, the mouse, the software. It's what it looks like from the side. We have a new megapixel display that's the same as our old one, except it's 10 pounds lighter, has an anti-glare screen on it, has a microphone built into the bezel. Let's go through real briefly. It's got the 68040 running at 15 MIPS. Comes with 8 megabytes of memory, expandable to 32 inside the slab. Our 2.88 megabyte floppy, DOS compatible, and 105 megabyte Winchester preloaded with all the software, and you can expand that to up to 340 megabytes inside the slab. It's got twisted pair and thin Ethernet, our megapixel monitor, keyboard, and mouse got all of our sound stuff in it, DSP, CD sound, microphone, and Next Step 2.0, and our bundled applications, and the complete system is $49.95, whether you want to be a standalone user or a network user. <laughs> One of the neatest things to me is that we have been recognized as having the most automated factory in the computer business. Every single one of the products here today at Davies was built in that automated factory. And after we finish building the boards, the next station goes together with only seven screws. Now, we've updated the cube as well for 1991. We've added a floppy disk inside, an 040 board, and we've added some new storage options. In addition to the floppy disk, 
and the 256 megabyte optical disk, which is optional in the cube. We have added full support for CD-ROMs in our Next Step 2.0 release, and you can get a CD-ROM drive inside the cube. And we are also announcing 1.4 gigabyte drives today, which you can add one or two of inside the cube for a total of up to 2.88 gigabytes in this one foot cube to be used as a server. For our existing customers, we're offering them the same 040 board as an upgrade with release 2.0 for $1,495. So no one is getting left behind as we speed these machines up by a factor of at least four. And we've decided if we're going to be successful, we have to be best of breed in each of these three existing categories. So let's take a look at where we are. In terms of spreadsheet analysis, here's a sampling. Today, Lotus is going to introduce Improv. The company that invented the modern spreadsheet with 123 is going to reinvent the spreadsheet for the 1990s. Improv takes us into an entirely new realm. Why do we choose Next for this fundamentally new product? Quite simply, we would not have been able to invent such a revolutionary new product on any other platform. That's the absolute truth. In fact, Next provided far and away the best platform for us to innovate. Improv would not have been nearly so good, not nearly so innovative anywhere else. We wanted a platform and we wanted a spreadsheet, not just for next year, but for the next decade. We wanted a spreadsheet that gives users new, better ways of viewing information, and that goes hand in hand with Next's innovative graphical user interface, big screen, and high resolution. There is categorically no better development environment in the world. Let's move on to publishing. In publishing, we have some equally exciting news. WordPerfect is announcing their product today. Just like Lotus, we went to the mainstream provider in the category. WordPerfect, as you know, has a greater than 70% market share for mainstream word processing. And they're announcing a very fine product today. Quark Express is also announcing a very fine product today. Quark, as you know, in our opinion, is the number one provider of the high-end publishing software. And we're extremely excited to have them on our platform. So we think with these products, we've got an awfully good start at the publishing market, which is one we care deeply about. Let's talk about the third one. People want to build their own custom apps. And we've heard universally that Next Step is allowing people to do this faster than ever, generally around a third of the time, and in a much more interactive fashion with their customers or internal users. Uh, for custom apps, here, and let's grab a field. And uh, let's go ahead and make a few of these here. We could make a bunch, but we'll just make three. Make them a little bit longer. And uh, we'll take this one and connect it to the customer info database. And what do we want to put on here? Well, why don't we put phone number, customer's phone number in case we want to call them. And we'll take this one and connect it to the database. And maybe on this one we'll put uh, feedback put the ID number. Why don't we put the disk size? And on this one, why don't we go ahead and uh, put the memory size? How about that? All right. So now we've got these three here. And we'll go ahead and move those down, maybe down here, and make our window a little bit wider. Even after these are hooked up, I can relay them out. I can add new controls, do whatever I want. And now I'll go ahead and get a rich text field and bring it over here. We'll make this one big. Because this is going to be used maybe in a customer service application. And I'm going to take this and hook it to the customer info database. And in feedback, I noticed a comments field down here. So let's hook that up. And now let's go back and test our interface. Let's go get the data. It's opening the connection with the Sybase database, pulling out the data we want. Here we go. Price is outstanding. There's Mr. Bennett's phone number. There's Mr. Greeley. He's got a 105 megabyte disk drive with 8 megabytes of memory. Phone number, phone numbers, and messages.
Now, this database object has come about because we've been working with Fortune 500 companies for the last two years as they have done their development work building custom applications on Next Step. And they have been able to build them in a remarkably short amount of time. What they're telling us is that most of those are database based. So could we help them out and extend our object-oriented technology even further to not only help them build their applications faster, but let them choose whatever back-end database they want without rewriting their application. And that is our goal for our database object, which we are collaborating on with our customers. We've seen building custom applications with Next Step. And we think in those first three categories, we absolutely have achieved best of breed. But we also believe that there's a fourth area. What we're hearing from everyone is that the competitive advantage of the 90s is going to be squeezed not out of more individual productivity, but out of improving the productivity of teams and groups of people working together. That's where it's going to come from. And so we think that the most exciting thing of the early 90s is going to be to link these islands of personal computers together into interpersonal computing, which has as its mission to improve group productivity and collaboration. Interpersonal computing has three fundamental parts, communication, collaboration, and content. We're going to explore all of those. The content is primarily the productivity apps from the personal computing marketplace, and we saw those. So if we're going to improve group productivity and collaboration, we have to start with the communication. And the best communication medium that we've ever seen is a multimedia email system. And again, it can't just be text. We've got to integrate the voice into it. We've got to integrate images into it. And we have to integrate, eventually, video into it. Now, in addition to PostScript and scanned in images and sounds, if I have just finished a spreadsheet and I want to send my spreadsheet to the entire marketing department or to the entire senior team of the company, I bring up a mail message, type in a few words to address it, and I drag that document right into the mail window. And I can put it anywhere I want. Here I've put it between some text. And the recipient simply double clicks on this. The spreadsheet launches and the data is apparent in a matter of a few seconds through the mail system spread out to as many people as you like. So this is Ashton Tate's PowerStep program. And here's a graph from PowerStep. And I see some lips in here, and I can't help but click them. Steve, this recent data from the National Research Council is really alarming. The spreadsheet graphically illustrates how fewer PhDs are planning on careers in higher ed. Click on the graph, grab a corner, and spin it to get a much better sense of the problem. OK. In PowerStep, I can simply grab the graph and move it. So we can have PostScript text, we can have scanned in images, we can have voice, we can have music, and we can have any document created by any application that exists today or tomorrow on the next system. Built in to release 2.0 of Next Step is fax capability. Let me show you what I mean. I go to print. And up pops my print panel. The new print panel for 2.0 lets you select printers very easily. But I'm not going to say print, because we've added a new button down here called fax. And I'm going to pick fax. And up pops the fax panel. And here are all the people whose addresses I have and phone numbers. And I can enter new ones very easily, modify the ones that exist. And they want me to fax this to somebody. So I would just pick Adobe, and I would say fax. We've saved ourselves a few thousand dollar sending fax machine. We've saved ourselves having to print something out and go find a fax machine and send it. And we get a far superior result on the other end. All the software is built into 2.0. You need an approximately $500 fax modem to make this work, but you can put one on the network and share it with groups of 50 or 100 people if you want to. So the likes of this stuff has really never been seen on machines before. And this gives you a brief sampling of what we mean by interpersonal computing. So let's examine color. We wanted the best quality color. So how do we find it? 
Well, first we have to say, what is quality? How do we define quality? We define it in two ways. One is by the number of colors. Most companies ship systems with 8-bit color, which gives you only 256 colors on the screen. While that is enough to do pink borders around your windows and purple menus, it is not enough... <laughs> it is not enough to put a photograph on the screen, which is what we believe the true market opportunity is. First thing I want to show you is the quality of the color. This is a GE projection system. It is nowhere near as vivid as the real monitor. Here we have an image of a beach uh, and a mountain in the background. And one of the things I'm going to do is I'm going to bring up a Ferrari here. Now, this is how every other computer, if it could, would bring up the Ferrari, and I'm sure it wouldn't be able to move it around much, but let's say it could. That's not so exciting. I'm going to go use a feature that's built into every next system and eliminate the black background and show the transparency. And if you look carefully, you'll see that you can even see the mountain through the windshield. These are full 32-bit color images that we're looking at. And we have added an Intel i860 on a board we call Next Dimension inside our cube. So this is what our Next Dimension board looks like. Let me go through the features briefly. A million pixels, all 32 bits with alpha channel. That's that transparency that lets us see through the windows. An Intel i860 graphics accelerator. And every system comes with 8 megabytes of RAM, expandable to 32, I believe. Full color postscript on every system. Everything you've seen today has been drawn by color postscript. Full NTSC and PAL video in and out. And full JPEG hardware compression at $39.95. Now, in order to get a system, we need a Next Dimension card. And we're going to be selling the Sony 16-inch Trinitron display for $29.95. And you need a cube. And you can buy a cube without the black and white display. And that's what a Next Dimension system costs. But we also wanted a low-cost color alternative. And it turned out beautiful. And I'm pleased to announce that we have a version of Next Station in color called Next Station Color, our fourth new product today. And Next Station Color is the same as Next Station, except it's got a million color pixels. Not quite photographic quality, but full 16-bit color, 4096 colors, which is near photographic. It's got 12 megabytes of RAM, 